But I want to give you a couple case examples too that's been um, kind of eye-opening and, and, and very interesting to say the least. So I kind of showed you that massive cuff tear. Um, I think it's kind of cool to see how the, the head shifts up as we kind of all assumed in these patients that have rotator cuff arthropathy. Um, but even more so, let's say you have a, a patient that you do a reverse on. And so you have this massive cuff tear, you do a reverse, it looks pretty good from, from my standpoint, but um, ultimately it's nice to know what's going on inside that reverse. So how, it, how much is their glenohumeral joint actually moving? Um, how much is their scapulothoracic joint moving? How are they actually rotating? What's happening with the implant? Is there impingement on their chromium? Is there impingement inferiorly in adduction? Also, maybe you want to look at how your patient is doing after an arthroscopic lower trapezius transfer. So you had that massive cuff tear. You saw the superior subluxation. You can see with this lower trapezius transfer, we were able to pull the head back down, and now it almost looks like a normal shoulder, both with regards to rotation in and around, as well as with regards to abduction. So you can see you've been able to recenter the humeral head um, both on the axillary plane and on the gracie view. And you can see we, we've, we've almost reestablished a normal shoulder with this procedure.